What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here, and today we're talking about a $1,000 camera versus an $8,000 camera. What's the difference? Why is it, why is it so much money? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, we got a lot to talk about and not a lot of time, so let's jump into it. First things first, which cameras are we comparing today? Well, we will be talking about the Canon 80D versus the Canon 1D, which is what I'm actually filming on right now. acquainted with these cameras. Ugh, this is the Canon 80D, the newest in its class with the dual pixel AF autofocus. What does that mean? I'll break it down. Essentially Canon, oh, Canon smashes everybody when it comes to the autofocus in their cameras. It is so fast, so accurate. You're not gonna find lots of hunting. What's hunting? It's kind of when the lens is trying to find something to focus on. It might be trying to focus on the background and then a different part of your face, or it's just, it's working too hard, too much. Canon has this system on lock. Part of the reason I haven't jumped ship yet is because that autofocus is just money. I have grown to use it on professional shoots. I rely on it now, which actually could be a problem. The fact that I count on it so much. If I go to something without it, I'm like, oh, what? Do I <laughs> this is an APS-C size sensor. It's a 1.6 crop. That means the image sensor, the actual part inside that processes the image, that captures the image, it's cropped by 1.6 times opposed to a full frame sensor. That means this is a 35 mil lens. If it's a cropped sensor, this has to be times by 1.6. 35 times 1.6 is a 56 millimeter lens. Double check my math on that. So you gotta keep that in mind. Now that is great if you're shooting sports or anything with telephoto because you are actually getting more range out of your lens. It's not just a 7200. Now it's a 112 to 320. So you're actually getting more. But if you want wider lenses, that's where it starts to hurt you a little bit because you might pay for a 14 millimeter or a 16 millimeter and you're not gonna be getting that ultra wide angle. So that is the one drawback of having an APS-C size sensor. However, it's not the end of the world at all. It's a full HD camera, does 1080p, does 60 frames at 1080p, but that is as much as it does as far as frame rates go. You're not gonna get that super buttery 120 frames slow motion. 60 frames is still great. However, that's one thing that this camera is lacking on in my opinion, and a lot of the Canon cameras are lacking on in my opinion, is the introduction of higher frame rate video across all of the bodies. So we got that three inch screen that spins around, great for vlogging, great for holding it out so you can actually see what you're doing when you're filming yourself. Hello. Battery life's pretty good. Takes the classic Canon LPE6 battery, which is the same in the 5D Mark III, in the 5D Mark IV, in the 5D Mark II. Great battery, great battery life. Happy with that. Now the shutter speed, the frames per second on this, it goes up to seven frames a second. So as far as high speed shooting goes when it comes to photos, you're only getting seven frames a second. I mean, the iPhone, I think, might even might even be faster than that. This is what I recommend most people get. If you wanna start making films, if you wanna start making vlogs, if you wanna start a YouTube channel, this is a solid, solid camera. It has that slow-mo, it's not 120 frames a second, but it's still something that's there at 1080p. It's a great, great camera to start with. Now some of the drawbacks, doesn't shoot 4K. This 2017, 4K is kind of just one of those things now that is like standard. Like, I mean, you get the Sony RX105, which is a small little point and shoot camera. That shoots 4K. My iPhone shoots 4K. Why doesn't this shoot 4K? I just, that's a big reason a lot of people are switching to Sony's. But for the price, this is a thousand bucks for 1099 on Amazon. You gotta put a lens on it still, but you are getting great technology inside this camera for 1099. So really, really recommend it. But how does it differ from something like the 1D? Well, I'm shooting on the 1D right now. I'll snap my fingers and we'll be on the 80D. Okay, now we are on the 80D. It's not 4K, but we are using the same lights, the same mic, it's set up exactly the same way on the tripod as the 1D was, and it looks pretty damn good. Like, if you're just starting out or you're serious about filmmaking, you wanna dump some money into a camera, but not too much, this is a great option. Now this, is the 1D. 
Now this is a big camera. This camera is heavy. That is one of the drawbacks. However, it's heavy for many reasons. There is a lot going on in this thing. This thing is a beast. It almost doesn't matter what time of the day you're shooting at, you can crank that ISO up and you can shoot video photos at practically any time of the day. Now the reason it's also a much bigger body is because it's got a grip on the bottom. So you can take photos here and you can also be taking photos here. So without having to buy an extra battery grip to plug into the bottom, this is just built in. Another reason this is so big is because it's got this big fat, let me see if we can see this here. It's got this giant battery in it. You can see that battery is huge. These are giant batteries. They last so long. This thing never dies. I only have two batteries because I've never actually needed to have three. It also comes with a giant charger that charges both of the batteries at the same time, which is awesome. Unlike the ADD that does seven frames a second, this camera does 16 frames a second. So if we're shooting in camera mode and we put this over to high speed frames, you'll see That's a fast camera. You can even see how many times the mirrors, I shouldn't be doing this, but check this out. Watch that mirror go. You can see me right there. That's the best thing I've ever seen in my whole life. This camera is fast. Now in order to keep up with those speeds, you need to use what's called the CFast card. Now that's one big drawback of this camera. Now these cards are amazing. That's a CFast card. These cards are amazing, but a 128 gig card is gonna run you like $800. These things write at like 550 megabytes a second. So that's just, what's nice is you have both card slots inside here. So when you're shooting something important, you can have it writing to a CFast card and a CF card at the same time, which is great for backups, especially if it's an occasion like a wedding or it's an event that you need to know before you leave that event, that you've already got a backup in camera before you even get to taking your laptop out. So another big win. A lot of the pro cameras do have two slots. This thing is weather sealed. You can get this thing pretty much soaking wet. I wouldn't recommend it, but it can take a beating. When you combo that with L-series lenses, which are also weather sealed, if it's raining, if it's snowing, if you're getting tons of mist, whatever the occasion, I don't ever worry about it. It's always fine. This thing has been completely soaked from the snow, from rain, from all of the above, no issues. Now let's talk about B-roll and frame rates because that's what interests me a lot with cameras. I shoot a lot of my B-roll at 120 frames a second. Now the 1D does 120 frames per second at 1080. It also does 60 frames a second at 4K. So those are two incredible options that are built into this camera and it looks so good. As you guys have seen in a lot of my vlogs and videos, the B-roll is just buttery smooth. <laughs> Now, what does the ADD do as far as B-roll? Well, it does 60 frames a second at 1080 and that's it. So in terms of frame rates, this thing is a beast, but that's also why it's so expensive. There are not many cameras out there right now doing 120 frames a second at 1080 that look as good as this. You guys have seen the proof. Also 60 frames at 4K is incredible. There's a reason this costs so much money. But can you still get good B-roll with a camera that's only a thousand bucks? 100%, you can still shoot 60 frames a second and get a nice slow cinematic sequence. We went out and just shot a couple things. It was super cold today and snowy, but we went out and shot a couple things to show you the difference between 120 frames a second using this and 60 frames per second using the ADD. <laughs> we 
quarterback and the 1D. Can you see the difference? Like I've always said, the best camera is the camera that you have with you when it counts. So that's it for me guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this little comparison of a $1,000 camera versus an $8,000 camera. It's not exactly an equal comparison, being that there's such different cameras intended for such different uses. But that's what's out there. That's what people are using right now. And I leave it to you to decide if it's worth it or not. For me, it's worth it. Hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Missing my hat again. <laughs>